Good afternoon, friends. It's now um, Tuesday, November 23rd. And uh, so I wanted to um, add to the video I made yesterday evening about uh, surviving the holy days uh, during a time of bereavement. And another one of the resources that I ran across, again, care notes, it'll be backwards. You won't be able to see it carefully, but um, you, these are available at uh, the funeral home of your choice. Um, this one is a little different than the one that I referenced yesterday evening. It uh, encourages you to work through your grief in a unique way. Um, they told a little story here that I think is probably real instructive. A friend of mine lost her mother shortly before Christmas. She and her brothers lived some distance away, but returned to be with their father for his first holy day alone. They wanted to cheer him up, so they put up the tree and decorated it lavishly as their mother had always done. The following year, they traveled again to be with their dad. They searched unsuccessfully for the tree and all the decorations. Only then did he tell them that the day after they left, he threw, all, he threw the tree and all of his finery out. He could not bear looking at it. Many families go through painful and unnecessary misunderstandings at Christmas because they haven't taken the time to talk honestly and openly about their grief and what they are feeling. So again, it also enumerates what I said yesterday, that um, you need to share your feelings openly with those in the family who are willing to listen. Um, I love the quotation here from uh, Henri Nouwen, who is a Roman Catholic theologian that I had the opportunity to actually see one time, and he left a, an indelible thumbprint on my heart. He says, and I quote, the only feelings that do not heal are the ones that you hide. And then again, the uh, bullet point here is to um, find your own way to grieve. Avoid shopping till you drop because that might not uh, serve its purpose. It'll just exhaust you. And um, it says here, with the holidays upon you, well-meaning people may give you well-intended but misguided advice on how to handle the season. You may hear such things as just keep smiling or you've got to be strong for the children or you just keep busy or even don't feel bad. He's in a better place. I think that was the one I referenced yesterday as a pious platitude. This sort of advice suggests that you suppress your feelings of grief and postpone the work of healing until after the holidays. So talk about the tough moments, the things that um, are hardest for you to, to face. Um, oftentimes getting outside yourself, as I mentioned yesterday, is very important. Uh, maybe reaching out to some children and seeing the holy season through the eyes of children can be a very helpful thing. We have, of course, at the church, a, um, a sharing that we call Time for Children. And um, I think sometimes engagement with children helps. Uh, it helps, certainly helps me to get outside myself and to see things through new eyes. Um, another bullet point here, Christmas is a perfect time to cherish our memories of a lost loved one, a one who has gone on to be with the Lord, even if they bring tears. Tears at Christmas are not bad. They are a wonderful gift that you might offer in memory of your loved one. And so, yeah, I think I hope someone um, cries tears for me when I'm gone. And, you know, that's a way people can verify the fact or validate the fact that our lives were meaningful. And um, again, the conclusion here, this is by Val Dillon. Um, Val wrote, Christmas will not be the same without your loved one present. There's no getting around that fact, but that doesn't mean that the season will stop having great meaning for you or that you will never be able to celebrate again and enjoy. For the time being, know that the pain you feel in your heart and your efforts to work through it and reach out to others at the holidays are perhaps the greatest Christmas gifts you could give in memory of your loved one. And also know that the wisdom, strength, and peace you gain from your experience is the greatest Christmas gift your loved one could have left for you. And I'm all often fond of saying our loved ones have left indelible thumbprints upon our heart. So when we share our memories, um, at least in terms of just thinking about them and thanking the Lord for our loved ones' touches upon our heart, uh, that may be one of the best ways of honoring them, not only during the holy season, but also any time during the year. So again, just some additional thoughts. I see I'm at four minutes and 57 seconds. So. 
God's peace be with you until we're together again.